hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel trouble free in this video i'm going to explain you about construction of dc machines in the subject of basic electrical engineering so this mostly comes under the chapter of electrical machines uh, as per uh, jnt uh syllabus if it is other curriculum i'm not sure which chapter this comes under but in this video we are going to see what a dc machine is and how it looks I'll show you the diagram. I'll explain you the each and every part of the DC machine. And uh, yeah, let's get into the video. If you have any questions at the end of the video, let me know in the comment section. So let's go. First of all, what is DC? DC is direct current, right? So direct current means you'll have only one direction. You'll have only unidirectional, one direction flow of charge. That means the electrons, charge is nothing but electrons, right? The electrons will flow only in one direction, okay? It is not bidirectional, it is only one direction. And for example, in real life, where you, we will use this DC uh, current is in, especially in EVs, in electric vehicles, and also in the LED lights, which we have in our house, okay? In these scenarios, we would be using the DC direct current. So then what is a DC machine? So DC machine is basically it's an electromechanical energy conversion device which can either work as a DC generator or DC motor. Why we are why, why we are saying electromechanical energy conversion is it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy or mechanical energy into electrical energy depending on the uh, mechanism that we are using i mean whether we are using it as a generator or motor based on this it will be either converting electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical okay so how dc generator will work how dc motor will work i will explain you in the next two videos uh, one for generator and one for motor i'll explain you everything in detail along with the diagram in the next videos but for now let's see what are the parts we will be having in a dc machine okay whether it could be generator or it could be motor the machine will be the same the parts will be the same the only working principle will change okay so in case of dc generator what will happen is you will convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy and in case of dc motor you will convert the electric and en electric energy into mechanical energy okay in, in case of motor electrical to mechanical generator mechanical to electrical remember motor right motor electrical to mechanical mem okay remember in this way meme or mem so something as per your comfort so the opposite will be the generator okay but for now you do remember like this but once you understand the working of generator and motor you don't have to remember it like this okay just by imagining you know just by understanding the working you can just recollect what happens got it let's get into the uh, video so basically every dc machine will have two main parts okay of course it has so many parts but those parts are subcategorized into two main parts. One is the st starter and one is the rotor. So starter is nothing but the stationary part. Whatever part is stationary, whatever part is common, which does not move is the stationary part, which is stator. And the rotor is the rotating part. There will be a part in the DC machine which always rotates and that part is the rotor. Okay. And the stationary parts we have on the stator, we have yoke, pole, um and field windings and in rotor we have armature core armature winding commutator brushes and shaft okay i will show you the diagram of dc machine now hold on give me a second okay so this is the diagram of dc machine so in general it will be even more bigger even more uh, picture if you search up in google you will get even more complicated pictures where you can understand it more better but for now i have taken simple picture so that you guys can even draw it in the exam if you want okay so this is the dc machine so as i told you this center part is there right this circular part this is the rotating part image imagine that as a some in in some machines you will be seeing a part which always rotates right like a tire in the car or something like that so that is a round and it rotates and this other these four things everything around this everything is a stationary part apart from that okay now let's go and understand each and every part in detail first is the yoke yoke is nothing but it is the outer frame and it is made up of cast iron or steel and what it will do is it will provide the mechanical protection and it will also provide a path for uh, flux what do you mean by flux flux is nothing but magnetic flux okay so what do you mean by magnetic flux magnetic flux is nothing but you already know this it is number of lines number of magnetic lines passing through a given area so in the given area 
so how many lines are passing is called as the flux magnetic flux in a given area how many magnetic lines are passing through that given area is called as the magnetic flux okay and this will carry the magnetic field okay this particular yoke will carry the magnetic field and it will also act as a protecting cover for the entire machine i'll show you the yoke weight see this round thing this round thing you see around this is the yoke this is usually made up of cast iron or cast steel which is very hard in nature so that the internal parts of your machine are protected in the same way it will also help you to uh, generate a path for the flux so it will also it, it also the magnetic field will pass through this okay so this is the yoke the outermost portion is the yoke okay and the yoke will come under the stator i mean it is a stationary part only right this is the yoke so the next part we are going to see is uh, the second the next part is pole this is how your pole looks like this total is called pole okay this total part is called pole okay in pole you have pole core and this bottom thing is called as a pole shoe i will show you what this is so this part is the pole this one you see right this is the pole totally this is called pole and this is fixed to the yoke with these screws if you can see the screws over here we have four poles and we have four screws attached and with the with the help of those screws it is fixed to this yoke okay so this is this <laughs> and this middle part is called as the pole core and this bottom part is called as the pole shoe now let's see what these pole core and pole shoe will do so pole is bolted to the yoke as i told you will uh, attach the pole to the yoke using the screws and the pole core is basically to carry the field windings i'll tell you what field windings is in the next part and the pole shoe what it will do whatever the magnetic flux is produced by these field windings that flux will be equally distributed throughout the machine with the help of this pole shoe okay this pole shoe will basically distribute the magnetic flux which is developed produced by the field windings okay i'll tell you what field windings is first and then i will come back to this and i'll explain you okay so this is the field winding i mean this is not the field winding just a second so this is your pole right just now we saw this is the pole so field windings are nothing but around these poles you will have some copper wires uh, around the, around them you'll have copper wires wounded uh, around them and th these are called as the field windings okay they are usually made up of copper conductors and the the purpose of this field windings is to produce the magnetic field when the current is passed when you start passing the current the magnetic field will be produced by these field windings okay so now let's go back to pole so whatever magnetic field is produced by these field windings that will be equally distributed to the other parts of the machine by this pole shoe by this pole shoe okay and this pole core the other i mean this is shoe right this is shoe but the other part of the pole which is the pole core what this pole core will do it will basically carry this so you need something to wound this um uh, wires right so that is the pole core okay the pole core is used to carry those field windings and this pole shoe will help you to distribute the magnetic field which is developed which is created by these field windings to the other parts of the machine if you can see here see this is the pole right so you have these holes right so from these holes you will take the wire and you will rotate it around the uh, pole core and then magnetic field will be generated by these field windings and whatever magnetic field is generated when we pass the current that will be distributed to the other parts with the help of this pole shoe okay this is the field winding right next with this we are done with the stator so we have three things in stator we have pole so pole means pole core and pole shoe both and we have yoke and we also have the field winding now let's see what other parts will do other parts in the sense the center part so in center part what all different parts we have let's see that first one is the armature core and this armature core is a round one in the center i'll show you it is made up of iron and it is to reduce the eddy current losses and in the armature core you will have some slots which are cut open where you can place the armature windings armature windings are again same like field windings they are wires which are rounded 
uh, which are put in these slots okay and what is the help of these windings we will see in the next 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 part hold on first i'll show you what is armature so this this round thing you see right armature this round thing is the armature okay and here you have these holes right in these holes you will be placing the armature windings okay so what armature windings will do these armature windings are nothing but they are the coils which are placed in the armature slots and their purpose is to produce the magnetic field here what is the purpose of field windings to produce the magnetic field here what is the purpose of armature finding windings again to produce the magnetic field itself we will understand why we need both of them to produce magnetic field and all in the next videos when we learn the working principle of the dc machines but for now just try to understand what parts are there okay so this is about armature windings so i have to tell you something here hold on so here it is written as armature conductor armature conductor or windings both are almost the same why because so this is a winding in what do you what is a winding basically it is like you know group of wires right so wire is usually made up of copper so again copper means it means it is a conductor right so that's why they are calling it as a armature conductor armature conductor or armature windings both are same you don't have to get confused with that with that okay so now let's move to the next part now the next part is commutator so commutator is usually placed in this area on top of this shaft you will have the commutators like this i'm not exactly drawing it properly but something like that you'll have some commutators around the shaft so what this commutators will do is first of all they are made up of copper and they are mounted on top of the shaft and what this commutator will do is it will collect the current which is generated and it will transport it through the brushes it will collect the current which is either generated within the machine or the current which is coming from outside the machine it will current that it will collect that current and it will transport it through the brushes what brushes are i'll tell you later so it has it will work in two ways in case of dc generator what it will do in case of dc motor what it will do let's see so in case of dc generator the commutator will collect the current and give it to the brushes and brushes will send the current outside so we just saw what generator will do a dc generator it will convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy so what it will do is it will collect the current give it to the brushes and the brushes will send out so brushes are sending out the current that is the mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy and that electrical energy is being sent out through the commutator okay and in case of dc motor what it will do what dc motor will do it will convert the electrical energy into mechanical energy right that means what it want first it want the electrical energy that means first it want the current so what it will do it will collect the current from outside and give it to the winding so the windings will generate the mechanical energy okay if you don't understand this part don't 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 worry at all you will understand it very clearly in the next video when i explain you about the working principles okay don't worry i am just giving you a high level explanation of this if you don't understand i can completely understand your situation because even i have studied this subject okay in the next video when i explain the working principle you will understand clearly don't get panic next what is the next part brushes so brushes again you'll have the brushes on top of this commutator i am not exactly getting how to draw the commutator guys you can just watch few view if you for watch few images on google maybe okay so on top of this you'll have brushes you'll total have like four brushes so two of them will be positive and two of them will be negative and all these brushes will be connected to the terminal box terminal box means it is outside okay so it is outside this is the terminal box it is outside the machine from the terminal box you will get the electricity or whatever electricity is generated you will send out and that will be received by the terminal box okay so uh, all these uh, two positive and two negative edges two brushes are connected to the terminal box and this brushes are usually made up of graphite or carbon and what is the purpose as i told same what commutator will do same brushes also will do the same thing okay commutator will send it to the brushes and brushes will send to the terminal box if you are getting the electricity inside then terminal box to brushes then brushes to commutator okay 
so that's what to collect the current from the commutator and send it to the terminal box or vice versa to collect from commutator to terminal or terminal to commutator it will sorry it will act as a intermediate between both of them okay that is brushes next is shaft shaft is like the center portion of the uh, machine okay this in the center you have something right this the center dot here it says shaft the center round is there right that is the shaft so why do you need shaft basically it is a center portion as i told and it is made up of steel so it will basically provide support to the commutator brushes and the armature core so the shaft is in the center on top of shaft you will put commutator on top of commutators you will put brushes armature everything will be around this shaft itself this shaft will basically provide support to all the rotating parts we have some rotating parts uh, right as we discussed in the earlier in the video so to for all those rotating parts this will provide support so in dc generator what it will do it will transfer the power generated to the rotor and in case of dc motor it will transfer the mechanical energy generated to the load okay again don't get don't don't worry too much about this for now you just understand shaft is a center portion and it provides the support you cannot place all the parts like commutator or brushes or all those parts in the air right you need something so just it provides support for that in the next video when i explain you the working principle you will understand everything very clearly so if you don't understand anything in this video don't worry at all just watch the next two videos again if you don't understand after that also then let me know in the comment section okay guys so that's all for this video let me know if you have any other questions in the comment section i'll definitely try to answer the questions and yeah that's all for this video and good luck for your exams